Do you want to make more money? No. Oh, okay. Well then click off this video. I'll wait. Hey guys, Emma here, and welcome back to my channel, Recipe for Success, where we like to talk about all things project management, product management related. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you guys some statistics and dishing all the dirt on how much money project managers actually make. We're going to look at some hardcore data to make sure you know whether or not you're being underpaid, and frankly, should you be looking for a new job? Should you be negotiating with your employer during this next race cycle to make sure that you're getting paid what you're worth. If that interests you, please go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up and we'll go ahead and get started. If you didn't know, Project Management Institute, PMI, goes ahead and publishes a report, Earning Power Project Management Salary, and they recently went ahead and published their 12th edition. This is for 2021. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys the rundown and looking at the abstract of that report in terms of understanding who they looked at, who they surveyed, the respondent pool, and also what valuable information there is from there for you to understand how much PMs are actually getting paid, both those with PMP certifications and also those without. So at a high level, guys, this earning power project management salary report covers 30,000 respondents. That's a great sample size and 40 different countries. So this is not just gonna be a video that's relevant to my United States viewers, my UK and Canada viewers, even though you guys will enjoy this, but if you are located in India, if you're located in Poland, if you're located in Egypt, you guys are gonna go ahead and be able to get some value out of this report, and I'm gonna go ahead and touch upon that for you guys as well. One thing to note, just about some general parameters for this report as I'm looking at it, most of the respondents, almost 79%, do in fact have PMPs, so most of them are in some way affiliated with PMI, and hold that project management professional certification. So that's something to note. I do like this report because they break down a lot of different demographics. So you actually have at your disposal the ability to look for situations that mirror your own to understand whether you personally are being underpaid or not. Some quick highlights, guys. If you're hearing from your particular employer that they're not able to give you a raise between because 2021 was rough on them, economically speaking, something that I thought was really interesting that are in the results for this survey specifically are the fact that at least 22% of the survey respondents said that they did in fact receive a substantial raise in 2021 of at least 5%. That's pretty impressive given, of course, the economic conditions that might be a result of the pandemic. So that's something to think about. If your employer is telling you that they're not able to give you a raise, just note that there are at least a fifth of organizations out there that are in fact giving raises and substantial ones at that. 5%, at least where I'm at, is considered more than just a cost of living adjustment. So that would be like a one or 2% raise. So that's pretty great. Note, obviously this last year hasn't been able to necessarily keep up with at least the inflation we had here in the US, but that's still better than nothing. And so again, I want you guys to be able to use and understand this information to arm yourself, to make better choices, both about your career and be able to negotiate with your employer if you're looking for a raise. So one question you might wanna know is what are some of the variables that this survey looked at? As part of the survey, Respondents were asked to provide position descriptions. So that is one thing that is included. There are years of experience. So what I like about this is if you're a newer PM, you're able to actually see what the average or median is for newer PMs who are within your experience range as opposed to looking at just a general average for all PMs. Also, I like the fact that they break down both the years of experience from years of project management experience. So if you're an individual, and I know I have a lot of viewers who are looking to move into project management, you guys can look for that sort of information as well. They also include highest level of education, whether or not the individual has a degree in project management, 
That's something that a lot of you guys ask me about as well. What is the value of a degree in project management? I think you could presumably take a look at the respondents who have had a degree in project management compared against those who haven't to see what the difference in salary is. Whether or not they have a PMP, so PMP status is another factor that they looked at here. The gender, the industry, I really like that because I do know for a fact that salaries can vary based on the industry of project management that you're looking at or looking for. So that's something to think about as well. And then the organization side which I think is very helpful. Maybe if you're working for a smaller organization, they don't have the funds to be able to pay as well as potentially a larger organization or even sometimes vice versa. Larger organizations have a brand name and that's what they're trading off of and that's part of your informal compensation. And so a medium-sized firm is gonna be able to pay you more because they know in order to get the right level of talent, they're gonna have to pay. So those are the factors that this survey went ahead and looked at. Um, and that's something that if you are looking to better understand whether you individually are compensated well, you wanna go ahead and ask yourself those same questions and understand how you stack and where you rank in this survey. The other thing that I really like about this survey, guys, is they don't just ask for information about salary, but they also include some information about benefits. So maybe you're in the process of negotiating um, for a new job and maybe the salary cap is there, but you haven't thought about negotiating for some salary benefits. The other thing that I really like is that they include things like pension plans and vacation time off. So that might be another opportunity for you to go ahead and negotiate with a potential employer or your current employer to say, look, maybe my salary is capped, but I'll go ahead and take that extra five days of vacation paid because I'm finding that other PMs with five plus years of experience are getting 20 days paid vacation, not 15. The cool thing that I learned as I was reading this abstract of this survey, guys, is that if you are a PI, PMI member, so if you recently got your PMP and chose to become a PMI member, you can get access to a customized survey query. So what I understand this to be is basically you can probably plug in a bunch of this information for yourself, and then they can tell you basically what the range is for whether, like what the range is for what you should be getting in terms of salary and compensation. So that's a really cool thing. When I was a PMI member, I didn't realize that that was a tool that I had available to me. So this is a public service announcement. If you are a PMI member, I suggest you go ahead and check out that tool and let us know if that was useful to you. So now let's get into the nitty gritty of some of these findings of this report. Now that we understand what the report was looking at and how they included respondents in it. Basically, I think there are a few key findings within this survey for 2021. The first one I mentioned already, which is there has been a noticeable increase in the median salary. At least a fifth of respondents said they got a 5% or more increase in salary in 2021. So that's great news. If you are up for a raise in 2022 and maybe didn't get one in 2021, there's an opportunity there for you to point to research that's published by PMI and say, look, this is what I'm worth and here's why. The other thing that I really like is they basically found that there were three key points of what influences the total compensation the most. And you might have already guessed some of this, but here's basically what it boils down to according to PMI and these survey results. One is years of experience. This one makes sense, guys. If you have more years of experience, you're gonna get paid more. If you are a newcomer into project management and you're maybe a little bit downfallen about that result, the great thing to think about and know and take away from this is, man, if you start project management and you continue on five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, you're gonna get paid more. We're finding that PMs with those level and years of experience are in fact getting paid more money. So that's great. It shows and demonstrates that there is an opportunity for upward trajectory and movement. The second thing that I thought was interesting is, of course, the position that you have, the role that you have, is going to impact your salary itself. So my guess is this probably means something like project manager versus program manager versus senior program manager is going to, of course, impact compensation. The last item that PMI says is what's impacting, basically, the salary or compensation is the size of projects managed. So this one, again, seems like common sense, guys. Of course, if you manage larger projects with larger budgets and the multi-millions of dollars, of course, why wouldn't you be compensated more? I think the thing here to take away is if you are trying to grow your salary and you're being told by your current company that you're not able to do that, and you're trying to figure out whether a new potential company will pay you more or is going to be within a salary or compensation range that's important to you, 
or um, available to you or what you're looking for. What I take away from this is one thing that you wanna be looking for in that next role or to increase your salary is to take on larger projects. So that's one thing that potentially might be more within your control. You know, years of experience, you just gotta pass the time in order to get that. But project size is something that you can actively look for or try to push for with your manager today in order to get that experience and then push for a higher compensation because of it. So maybe today, most of your project budgets are $50,000 and you know that there's a new project coming down the pipeline that's gonna be double that $100,000 project with double the number of people, you should be having a conversation with your manager to say, hey, how, how do I become the project manager of that project? What do I need to do to show you and demonstrate to you so I can get that project? Now let's talk a little bit about the best paid PMs, guys. What country do you think the highest paid project managers are in? I'll go ahead and give you guys five seconds to put it down in the comments below because I was really shocked by this. Did you write down your comment? Okay. Did you say the United States? I did. I was sure it was going to be the United States with Silicon Valley and all of our technology, but it is not. The actual highest average median salary for project managers is in bum -ba -da -bum, Switzerland. Wow, are you surprised? I'm shocked. I'm shocked, color me shocked. I had no idea Switzerland paid so well and it's not by an insubstantial amount. Now the report showcases all of the median um, salary compensation in US dollars, so just as an FYI, $140,000 is the median project manager salary in Switzerland, compared to the next highest, which is the United States, at only 115. So that's shocking, $25,000 more guys to be in Switzerland. Now, of course, this doesn't hold constant for cost of living, so I know Switzerland's more expensive to live in, presumably than some areas of the United States, so I'm curious how far that salary goes, but wow, that's a lot of money, guys. Another question I have for you guys is, is $115,000 median salary for a project manager in the United States, is that higher or lower than what you were thinking? I will say for me, that's a little bit higher than what I was expecting. I think that sounds about right though, given the fact that there's a variation in experience and industry, like 115 sounds pretty good to me. It sounds like a reasonable salary for someone who has some experience um, and is doing good work. The third country with the highest salary for project manager role is actually Australia at 113, so closely following the United States. Now, what about the countries that get paid the least? Um, for my followers and folks on this video who are either from Pakistan or Egypt, got some bad news for you guys. You are amongst the least paid in this survey of 40 countries. Now remember, they aren't comparing you to your own countrymen, they're comparing you to other PMs across the world. So one thing I'm curious, if you are from those countries, 13 and $15,000 is what the average PM in those countries makes. I'm curious how far that goes in that country, if that's actually a really good salary or if that's not a great salary. The other thing that would be interesting is if you're from one of these countries where you guys aren't getting paid as much as um, the equivalent person in the United States or in Australia, you know, what is the ability and what's your opportunity to try to get things like in the, into the United States so you could work as a project manager here and potentially make more money. Or I've definitely worked with companies where we hire remote PMs in different places like India. So what's, what's the opportunity there? And that might be something that you might wanna look into. Now, if you go to try to download this report, guys, one thing you might find is that you're not gonna have access to the full report as a non-PMI member, but you do have access to what I would kind of refer to the, as the abstract. So you do have access to some of the data. And I do like this because for me personally, this is definitely plenty of data to sift through and try to understand whether or not I'm getting paid appropriately. One of the things they do is they show you the number of respondents per your country. So note that some of the sample sizes are a little small, only a few hundred, um, and they won't show any responses if they got less than 10 people. Countries like Canada and the US are gonna have several thousand respondents, and I think that's a little bit better. But they do have all these nice tables that are broken down by the years of experience, the position and role, and the size of the project. So that's nice where you can go then and sort of compare based on your years of experience whether or not you're being paid enough. 
So if I'm looking at this, the annualized salary, which is in USD, by years of experience in project management. They've broken it down into less than three years experience, which I would deem a beginner, three to five years, five to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, and 20 plus years. And then all the countries are on the left-hand side and they are, of course, alphabetized. So looking down at the United States, which is at the bottom here, for a PM with um, 10 to 15 years experience, it looks like the median, now remember that's the average, salary is $120,000. For a beginner, it's 78. So, you know, less than three years experience getting paid $78,000. I think that's pretty good. Um, you can also see the growth in salary expectations depending on your years of experience. So this is another thing that you might find interesting in helping you determine whether or not you wanna be a project manager. You can see between less than three years to three to five years of experience, you can expect your salary to go from on average $78,000 to on average $85,000. So if we were to look at the percentage growth there, you're looking at under 10%, but above 5%. So maybe like a 7% increase in your salary for your first five years of experience. And then the next five years, so going from zero to five and then five to 10, there's a reasonable, a pretty big bump. You're going basically from 78 to 100. And so at that point, once you get five years of experience, they are expecting you to jump up $15,000, which in this case would be almost a 20% increase. So that's pretty good. So to me anyway, I think that's pretty good for just thinking about that trajectory and what's available in terms of salary advancements. If you're from a different country, I highly suggest you go ahead and do that same exercise if you're considering moving into project management to try to understand whether or not this is something that interests you and is worth it to you. I get a lot of questions from you guys. Is it worth it for me to switch? Is it worth it for me to become a project manager? I can't always answer that for you guys because what worth is to you is going to be different for every person. But this table to me personally is a good indicator of potential ROI and what you can expect to help you answer a question like that. <clears throat> the other thing that they talk about here is PMP certification status. So they do say that, and I thought this is pretty interesting, the majority of survey respondents, of course, like I said, do have their PMP. And in most countries, PMPs do report higher salaries than non-PMPs. So for those of you considering getting your PMP or not, however, and they're very clear about this, the percentage of lift and median salary varies widely. So basically what they're saying is how much ROI you're gonna get out of that PMP is gonna vary based on the country that you're in. And interestingly enough, they say that the country with the largest salary increase is Colombia. Do I have any viewers from Colombia? If I do, please comment down below guys. If you are in Colombia, wow, based on this report, I hope you have your PMP because PMPs in Colombia get paid over 50% more than those without their PMP. That's just based on the survey results. If I were in Colombia and considering whether or not to get a PMP, I would probably take one look at this and be like, definitely worth it. But you know, up to you to decide, of course. For the United States, it looks like they're saying that the PMP versus non-PMP is making roughly 32% more. So you can see at 10 plus years, a PMP is making 140,000 compared to the 120 for the non-PMP. So that's pretty exciting guys. And I think this helps, right? If you're a PMP and you're in one of these countries with X years of experience, you could definitely look and see, are you making as much as the survey respondents. Um, position, so this one's great. I like the fact that they break down the title role. So if you're applying for certain roles, again, and you're trying to understand how to negotiate for a particular role, you can go ahead and look at this to better understand. So they do say that rate of increase very significantly, of course. The titles that they look at, guys, are Director of Project Management, Portfolio Manager, Program Manager, Project Manager 3, Project Manager 2, Project Manager 1, project management specialist and project management consultant. So if you are a beginner PM, I think you'd be looking at project manager one, um, program managers, if that's something you're applying for, they have that, and of course, director of project management. And then project size. So the way that they talk about project size here is, and they do publish both the team member size and the project budget. 
So that's what's available to the general public, guys. If you are interested and in thinking about applying for project management roles, if you've already done so and you already started a conversation with HR about compensation and what the compensation is going to look like, and you aren't sure what band to provide for your title and your role and your years of experience. Or honestly, if you're just someone who's here, who's curious about becoming a project manager and isn't sure whether or not the juice is worth the squeeze, whether or not it's something you wanna pursue and what the opportunities look like, I hope you go and take a look at this report. This is again, available to anyone on the internet. I'll go ahead and put it in the description below for you guys as a link for you guys to read up on your own. I was pretty encouraged by this news. I mean, I think this is fantastic information to have available to you as an individual so you can make more informed decisions and have better conversations with your employers about your compensation. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much again for watching. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.